verse number one through three, I'll read in your hearing. And it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. We want to talk to you today from these three verses, highlighting uh, verse number two, which says, looking unto Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say to your brother, to your sister, sit next to you, looking unto Jesus. Can church say amen? Amen. Looking unto Jesus. There's many people today that uh, in their minds, in their lives, they are looking for answers. Amen. This is an age that has a lot of questions, an age where uh, people are looking for answers to their problems. People have problems today. Amen. It is impossible to live in this life and not have any problems. Can we say amen? It's impossible. Everyone has problems. And it is, praise God, um, natural for us to seek to resolve our own problems. Praise God. And, of course, you can't get through, the life, through this life without any problems. Amen. Life is, can be a hard way to go. Praise the Lord. And, and in as much as that we are accustomed to trying to resolve our own issues based upon our skill and ability, based upon our intellect, praise God, based upon how much money we may have, or who we are, many times we set out and on occasion are successful in fixing our own problems. But life is something that is bigger than all of us. Life has tendencies to throw things at you that you cannot handle. Sometimes in our own folly at times we may not be as smart as we think that we are. We might not be as apt as we may think that we are. We may not be as, praise the Lord, wise as we think we are. And many times because we feel that we are more apt than we really are and more wise than we really are and smarter than we really are, many times we can find ourselves in situations, in circumstances with problems that perhaps are bigger than ourselves that we realize that we don't have the aptitude to resolve these issues. If we don't have the skill, we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the wisdom, we don't have the know-how to fix and resolve these issues that we have found ourselves in. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I want you to understand that there's a God that's able to do anything exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may ask or think. And... Life is of such that it will put you in a position to where you will not be able to resolve your own issues. Amen. This is why they have Alcoholics Anonymous. This is why they have drug addiction centers. This is why they have sociologists and psychiatrists and doctors and different kinds of professional people that deal with, praise the Lord, human issues to render help and assistance and aid to help us deal with life's problems, to help us to deal with our own issues. Amen. Psychoanalysts that will be able to psychoanalyze, psychiatrists that will be able to talk to us to try to get us to see ourselves and to see the issues at hand. 
to try to give us hope, amen, and confidence in our situation. But for the most part, they're not really changing our dilemma. Can we say amen? Amen. They're not really resolving the issues because they have issues in and of themselves. Amen. I was talking with a psychiatrist on one occasion. I had to have some surgery done many years ago. And in order to have the surgery, you had to go talk to a psychiatrist. Praise the Lord. Because they say that the surgery could have adverse effect upon a person. So they wanted to make sure that I had the right frame of mind to be able to handle the aftermath of the surgery just in case things went sideways. And praise the Lord. And I was talking with that psychiatrist and found out Amen. That that psychiatrist that was supposed to help me with my issues, he had a psychiatrist that he was talking to to help him with his issues. Amen. Can the church say amen? I remember when my father, when I was a little boy, amen, my father took us to the doctor for any and every little bitty thing. Uh, and after a while, the doctor, amen, they just would give us uh, shots of just sugar water uh, because there was really nothing wrong with us. And I remember this particular doctor, I believe he's dead now, his name was Dr. Anderson, uh, and he was a real tall doctor. He had a big old red nose, amen, that used to always get my attention. But the thing about Dr. Anderson that used to strike me so was that every time we would go see him, he always had a cold, he was always sick, he was always coughing. And I used to say to myself as a little boy, how is this man going to help me? He looks sicker than I am. Amen. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like that before. Amen. But that was a thing that I had in my mind. I, just as a little boy, I said, how is he going to help me? He can't even seem like he can help himself. Amen. But that's the way man is. That's the situation that man is in. That's the dilemma that he finds himself in. But yet and still, he tries to impress upon you that he is the answer for his own problems. Just look at our presidential candidates. Hillary Clinton being the first presumptive uh, Democratic nominee female in the history of our democracy. Praise the Lord. And Donald Trump, the racist. Can we say amen? Amen. You have the racist that's running, and then you have amen, the so-called, as they say, liar that's running. Well, we all know that all politicians lie to some degree. Is that right? Amen. They'll lie to try to get whatever they can get. Praise the Lord. And we ought to know, amen, that morally and ethically, that's not the right way to be. But yet and still, one of these individuals is going to be the chief executive officer, the most powerful person in this world. Can the church say amen? Amen. And look at, amen, the problems in our country. Look at our deficit. Look at our, amen, social security system. Look at, praise the Lord, the laws in our governments and all these things and problems of terrorism worldwide and the national debt issue where we have to borrow money from China and different other countries just to keep the business of the government open. Amen. And praise God. And sometimes the issues get so bad where the government actually runs out of money. And the church say amen. And they have to shut down the government and have to tell people to stay home because the government doesn't have enough money, amen, to pay its employees, amen. And so you have these presidential candidates that are trying for the last year to convince us that they are the answer to America's problem, that they're going to make America great again, that they're going to bring America back, making all of these promises. But how many of you all know that there's some promises that you just cannot keep? Can the church say amen? Amen. There are just some things that just cannot be done. There are some things that man just cannot resolve. Amen. Look at cancer. We've had so many people die of cancer. Can the church say amen? Amen. And they've been doing cancer research and trying to raise money to find a cure for cancer ever since cancer has been on the scene. Amen. Sickle cell disease and amen. Leukemia and polio and all these other diseases that amen tend to grip the human family. Amen. Of which we cannot praise God help ourselves. We cannot heal ourselves. We don't have the answer to all of these problems. You see, you must understand that when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, amen, by listening to his wife and praise God, she being deceived by eating the fruit of the tree that the devil presented to her, Satan knew that he could not get to Adam. 
praise God, but he knew that he could get to Adam through Eve. And it was through Eve that, praise God, he decided that he was going to eat of that fruit of the tree, even though that he knew that it would bring death and destruction, amen, to the human family. I don't know if Adam understood and really realized, amen, the full ramifications, praise God, of his act that he performed. Amen. He ate of that fruit of the tree simply because he wanted to be with his wife. Because God had told them that, amen, out of all of the trees of the garden, you may freely eat. That's all right. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat of that tree. Because if you eat of that tree, you're going to surely die. You're going to bring upon yourself trouble and woe that of which you will not be able to handle. I want y'all listening to me this morning. Praise God. And so, amen, Satan tempted the woman, and the woman was deceived. Praise God. And then she came to her, Adam. Amen, came to Adam, the first man and the first woman, amen, that ever lived upon the face of the earth. The only two people, praise God, that never had a childhood, but were created as full-grown adults with the capability to communicate with each other and to communicate with their God. Can the church say amen? We all know the story as we read in the book of Genesis how, amen, because Adam, praise the Lord, wanted to be with his wife. He did not want to live forever without her and watch her die, amen, because of her violating the commandment of God. The Bible let us know that he took up the fruit thereof and he ate. And when Adam sinned, sin entered into the nature of the human family. And God began to be displeased with Adam's disobedience even though that he knew. Adam knew what he was doing. He knew to some degree the ramifications behind amen, his disobedience toward God. But because of what he wanted, because of what he desired is the thing that got him into trouble. And that has been the staple of mankind, amen, even unto this day, almost 6,000 years after Adam sinned in that garden, man's desires and what he want has done nothing but got him in trouble time and time again. I want y'all hear me on this morning. Amen. That's the problem with mankind. Mankind's biggest problem, amen, is himself. Amen. It is his desires. It is what he wants. He wants what he wants at all costs. Amen. But you cannot have whatever you want to have without some ramifications. Amen. There's, amen, a cost. There's a price that every one of us has got to pay for the decisions that we make. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. I'm almost finished on the day. Amen. Every decision that we make, there are consequences for every decision that we make. Praise God. And many times because of what we really want to do and we know what the ramifications are behind the decisions that we make because we want to do what we want to do so bad, many times we tend to minimize Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, the consequences that may come behind. Amen. What we decide to do. Because we want to do it so bad. Because we want to have it so much. Amen. This is the thing that tends to trap us every time we are our own biggest problems. Amen. The black man's problem is not the white man. Can the church say amen? And the white man's problem is not the black man. Amen. The problem is within us, ourselves. We are our biggest problem. We are our biggest enemy. We are our biggest downfall. And unless we destroy ourselves, we need to turn to God to help us, to help us with ourselves. Because if God does not step in, amen, and show us the right way, amen, we will ultimately destroy ourselves. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh, yes, man is doing it already. Amen. He's our environment. They're talking about that we need to go green. Why? Amen. Because man is destroying his environment. Just look at what happened down in Flint with the water crisis down there. It was because man wanted to save some money that they decided that they would change the water system down. Amen. In the city of Flint. Amen. And praise God. I don't think that they really understood 
all of the ramifications behind the decision that they made but because of what they wanted so bad even because of the desire to save so much money amen praise God they changed the water system amen and when it came out that it was the wrong thing to do because they still wanted to do what they wanted to do they justified and tried to cover it up and what was the result people died for got sick and there will be those that will suffer life long problems health wise even because of what somebody wanted to do amen can the church shout hallelujah amen and that's the problem that we have today amen that's the situation that we find ourselves in amen even look at your own self look at your own life look at how you lived and the decisions that you made even that have cost you time and time again but many of you were slaves to your own desires and you were slaves to your own will you were slaves to your own addiction and the church shout hallelujah amen and people tried to talk to you and then you just could not listen and in many cases you understood what they were saying I know I'm destroying myself I know that the decisions that I'm making amen are the wrong decisions I know it has cost my family it has cost me my job it has cost me my health but I can't seem to help myself well the Lord Lord has a message for you today. Amen. You don't have to look to man to try to resolve your issues because man can't do it. How do we know? Because look at yourself. You can't solve your own problems. And that's why the Hebrew writer said, looking unto Jesus in the church shut hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Praise God the author and finisher of our faith. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see the Hebrew writer, when he wrote that epistle, amen, the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews, it was tied into the 11th chapter. And in that 11th chapter, amen, he opens up that chapter by saying that faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And he went on in that 11th chapter and talked about men of God that had their problems, that had their issues issues that could not help themselves but by faith they looked unto Jesus they looked unto God to help them with their situation can the church shout hallelujah amen the world's problems will never ever be solved because the world will never amen stop amen and look to God to help them with themselves can you see amen Donald Trump amen praying and looking to God to help him to help America with with their problems amen I know he's a billionaire and I know that he is successful and he has billions and billions of dollars but the problems that we have in this world amen money cannot solve those problems I, in the church shout hallelujah having an anger within your heart amen is not going to solve our problems I, amen and so the Hebrew writer as he wrote in the 12th chapter of Hebrews reflecting back upon the 11th chapter concerning men and women amen that were in predicaments that they could not amen deliver themselves talked about how they looked under God and how they had faith in God to help them amen to get out of their dilemma in the church shout hallelujah see I want you to understand that you can get help for your situation this morning you can get help today for your life's problems uh, you can get help today amen all you got to do is take the first step amen and the songwriter said if you take one step amen God will take two steps uh, amen can the church shout hallelujah uh, amen you can't get anything amen unless you put something into it amen whatever you want to get you got to invest yourself into it you can't get money out of a bank unless you put some money in the bank uh, you can't in even receive a return on an investment unless you invest something in the investment amen and the same thing it is when it comes to God and his salvation amen you have to put something in it if you want God to give you something out of it and the church shut hallelujah somebody said well preacher what do I have to give amen in order to get something from God amen God amen doesn't need your money amen he doesn't need your house he doesn't need your family car all he want is your heart all he wants you to say Lord I give myself to you 
I give up the life that I was living uh, because I made a mess of it already. Uh, amen. I've lived and uh, seemed like that every time uh, I seem to get ahead. Uh, I tend to fall two steps backwards uh, in the church. Hallelujah. Uh, Amen. You see, the Bible said, uh, Amen. If you acknowledge him in all of your ways, uh, Amen. He will uh, direct your path. Uh, and if there's anybody I need to direct my path, uh, Amen. That's Jesus. Uh, come on, clap hands and shout hallelujah. Uh, come on and say hallelujah. Uh, amen. Uh, I want you to realize, uh, Amen, that you need God's help. Uh, Amen. If you feel that you don't really need him, uh, amen, just keep on living. Uh, amen. Because life, uh, amen, likes to play games at us sometime. Uh, it will come a situation. Uh, it will come a circumstance uh, where you would not be able, uh, amen, to figure your way out. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, it will come a situation uh, where you would not be able to, amen, think your way out. Uh, Amen, it would be beyond uh, your skill and your ability. Uh, amen, you can look at your life right now. Uh, in the church, shout hallelujah. Uh, amen, and look at your life right now. Uh, right where you sit. Uh, and there have been problems, and you might have them right now. Uh, in the church, shout hallelujah. Uh, you might have a problem right now uh, that you can't resolve. That You're trying to figure out what can I do. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where can I go. Uh, trying to figure out how can I get out. Uh, well, there's a way out for you this morning. Uh, amen. And his name is Jesus. Uh, oh, yes. His name is Jesus. Uh, I'm going to clap in and shout hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. You see, I was doomed as a young man growing up with porn all over the house. Growing up with drugs all over the house. Father beating my mother. Amen. And all kinds of things going on in the home. I was set up to repeat the practices. Amen. Of my ancestors. Amen. You know how it is. Amen. They look at you sometime and say, huh? Amen. When you are misbehaving, uh, oh, you are just like your mama uh, in the church. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, oh, you just like your daddy. Uh, I used to hear all the time as I was growing up. Uh, oh, you are just like Floyd. Uh, listen at how you talk. Uh, look at how you act. Uh, and I didn't want to be like him because uh, my heart had been broken too much because uh, my father wasn't there. Uh, amen. At a critical time uh, when I really need. Him. Come on and shout hallelujah. I don't know if you ever been through that. Amen. Having a father that you needed him in a critical time. There's always a critical time in the life of a little boy where they need their father. And the church, hallelujah. And if their father is not there, amen, they can grow up warped. They can grow up distorted. That's why many of the young men uh, don't know how to treat a young lady. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, many of the young men don't know how to dress. Uh, walking around with their pants uh, hanging down. Uh, what's wrong with them? Because some of them uh, at a critical time in their boyhood uh, didn't have the right role model. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, I know you don't like this preaching, uh, but I think I'm preaching pretty good. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, Oh, you have the young lady, uh, praise the Lord, uh, growing up without uh, the mother that she needs. Uh, there's a critical time uh, in the life of the young lady uh, where she needs uh, motherhood. Uh, in the church, shout hallelujah. Uh, a mother to teach her uh, how to choose the right man. Uh, a mother to teach her uh, how to behave like a lady. Uh, a mother to show her uh, how to dress like a young lady. Uh, uh, look at the girls right now. Uh, they dress like prostitutes. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Hallelujah. Uh, you ain't gonna hear this type of preaching on Creflo Dollar. Uh, but you will hear it here. Uh, at the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, look at the young lady. Uh, they used to be delicate and dainty. Uh, now they'll push up on the brother. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, they don't want to wait. Uh, they'll push up. Uh, even on the young man. Why? Uh, 
because at a critical time amen in her younghood mama was not there I was in that situation father was not there come on and say yeah and I saw myself amen following the same pattern come on and shout hallelujah and I made up in my mind when my mother brought me to church because she couldn't do nothing with me I was more than she could handle I said Lord I need you to save me I need you to help me help me with myself help my mind I got crazy thoughts going through my mind help me Lord I'm a slave to my addiction help me Lord I'm bound in my own desires and I'm going to tell you today he came through for me he washed me filled me with the Holy Ghost and if he did it for me he can do it for you I'm here to say yeah hallelujah come on and say yeah I want to hear it. I want to tell you, as I close this morning, the Hebrew writer was reflecting back on those in the 11th chapter that were in sticky predicaments, were suffering life's problems, and they needed help from God. It's all about faith. Come on and see here. We're in a day with folk. All they want to talk about is their feelings. I feel this. I feel that. Come on and say yeah. But I beg to differ with you and challenge you this morning. Get out of your feelings. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Why don't you try something different on this morning? Put all your faith in God. Come on and say yeah. Faith that a move mountains. Faith make the devil back up. Faith that cause God to come on your scene. Faith that make the storm cloud move. Faith that make peace be still. Faith in God. Somebody need to have some faith and say, Lord, I'm going to step out on faith this morning. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to go down in the warm water. In Jesus' name, I want to get the Holy Ghost. I want to have some faith in you. I tried everything, everything, and it would not work. I'm going to try you. I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. I pray to say, yeah. Come on and say yes. Say yes. Look unto Jesus. If you own drugs, look to Jesus. If you are lost, look to Jesus. If you got a problem in your life, he specializes in your problem. He's a God that's able to move your mountain. He's a God that's able to heal your body. He's a God that's able to pick you up, turn you around. Jesus can do it. Jesus is who can do it. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. He's a way maker. He's a healer. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Jesus. I tell all. A base city. You don't have to pray to Mary. You don't have to go to Martha. You don't 
God to praise. Jesus is the answer to your problem, to your situation, to your circumstance. And when he comes into your life, he comes in and make your life better. Don't you want to get to know God for yourself? You see, as a young boy growing up in church, I heard a lot of testimonies. Lord, have mercy. And I heard folk get up and testify about God and the things that he can do. But there came a time in my life when I said to myself, I got to find out for myself. I want to find out just how real God really is. Is he that real? Will he come in my life and save me? Will he come in my life and change me? Will he come in my life? Will he really free me from my addictions? Can he rescue me? Can he give me the answers to all of my problems? And I found out that he's way more than that. He taught me how to be a man. He taught me how to be a father. He taught me how to be a leader. He taught me how to be a good person. I didn't have a natural father with me. But Jesus became my father. And I learned from him. And you can learn from him today. It doesn't matter how you grew up. It doesn't matter what's in your family history. I had a bad family history. But God saved me and he started a new history in my life. He started, he broke the trend in my family. Hear me say amen. Save me and call me to preach. Married a woman in the church. Raised up children in the church. They're saved. Some of them are preaching. Some of them got children saved. Change the whole culture. That's what God does. That's how he works. Amen. What is your situation? You need God today. Don't wait till you get to the point to where you need him and you can't get him. Because God is not available all of the time. He's only available for a space of time. And you have no way of knowing when your time is up. You don't believe that? Read the first chapter of Proverbs. Read that in chapter. In the latter part of that chapter, God forsakes a person that finally turns to him because it's too late. Sometimes it's just too late. Can we say amen? Have you ever gone to a store? Needed something, and the store was closed. There ain't nothing you can do about it, because that store is closed until tomorrow. Well, Pastor, I can just go to another store. What if it's the store that had exactly what you needed and the other stores didn't? Sometimes, sometimes it can be too late. There is a such thing as being too late as far as God is concerned. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That indicates two things, that there's a time when God cannot be found and there's a time that we can be found. Call upon him while he is near. Again, that indicates two things. There's a time when he can be near and there's a time when he is not near. You need to get him while he is near. Can we say amen? It's like you're going to the store and they have a sale. Ain't no need you going there trying to get the dress or the clothes or whatever after the sale is off because the sales will say the sale is over. Well, I would have came yesterday, but they would say, you should have came yesterday. Now it's triple the, the price as it was yesterday. 
Sometimes in life, it's just too late. Don't wait till it's too late when it comes to God. Why take that chance? Because you don't know when it's going to be too late. You know within your heart, within your soul, that you need God today. You know that you need, that you are not living the life that you know you ought to live. If you surrender your life to God, he'll give you the power to live everything that is in this book. I mean everything. But you have to have power to live it. You have to be, you have to repent. You must believe that when you come to Jesus, he will save you. Get baptized in his name for the remission of your sins, for the forgiveness of your sins. And God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the power to. And you will have power to live this as long as you use the power and allow it to live through you. Now you have to come to church. Can we say amen? Because you have to learn how to live for God. Because you see, when you first get saved, you don't know nothing. You're like a babe in Christ. What does a little baby know when they're born into the world? Baby can't do anything for themselves, can they? The baby is the most helpless creature out of all of God's creation. They can't even feed themselves. They don't even know who they are. They can't do nothing. The mother has to do everything for them. The same thing it is when a person comes into the church. They don't know anything. You cannot use any of your prior knowledge of God once you come into the truth. You have to throw all that out so that God can teach you some things. So that you can learn about your salvation, about your responsibilities to God, your responsibilities to his church, his responsibilities towards you. Because when God saves you, he saves you and gives you a job to do. You've got to come and find out what your job is. Can you say amen? If you stay out of church, you can't abide by this fully. You will break some of this. And then you'll be in trouble with God all over again. And that's not what God saved us for. He saved us, changed our lives, so that when he comes, he will take us back with him away from the wrath of God that's going to fall on this world. Because it's going to happen. I can take you through the Bible and show you prophecies of what the Bible said would happen in our time. And you would have to admit that they are happening. There are scriptures in the Bible, prophecies that are thousands of years old that said what will be happening in our time that we're living in. And I can show you in the Bible when it says certain things. Well, one of them, the Bible says, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. And if there ever was a time that man loves himself today, that time is now. The love of money is the what? Root of all evil. Any, any evil that you can think of is motivated by money. Money. <laughs> so God's calling you today. Amen. Why don't you give your life to him? He's calling.